So now we are going to see how do we detect plain polarized light, then circularly polarized light and at last elliptically polarized light. So for plain polarized light we use Nicole prism. So to detect if a light is plain polarized light we use Nicole prism. Now Nicole prism is rotated about the incident beam as axis. So we make the incident light to fall on the Nicole prism. Now this light is plain polarized light but we have to detect we have to prove that it is a plain polarized light. So we make this light to fall on Nicole prism. And in Nicole prism you have to keep in mind one thing that when the vibrations of the electric field they are perpendicular to the principal section of Nicole prism that component in that case the light is blocked by the Nicole prism. If the vibrations of electric field they are perpendicular to the principal section of the Nicole prism that component that light in that case is blocked by the prism and this is because we have already done that the o-ray which has its vibrations perpendicular to the principal section is blocked by the Nicole prism so in that case the light behaves as ordinary ray or it behaves as o-ray inside the Nicole prism and vibrations which are perpendicular to the principal section of Nicole prism are completely blocked and no light is transmitted by this Nicole prism. So we take a Nicole prism and we start rotating this prism and in one complete rotation in a one complete rotation or you can say in a rotation of 360 degrees we see that there are two angles there are two positions which are 180 degree apart where the incoming beam is completely extinguished. So if the light is plain polarized light we will see that on the rotation of the Nicole prism there will be two angles there will be two positions which will be 180 degrees apart from each other where the incoming beam is completely extinguished and in that case in this case the vibrations of the incoming light will be perpendicular to the principal section because if you rotate the Nicole prism the principal section of the Nicole prism will also rotate and there will be two positions there will be two angles of the Nicole prism where the vibrations of the electric field of incoming light will be exactly perpendicular to the principal section so in that case no light will be transmitted so there will be and in addition to this there will be two maximum intensities there will be two maximum intensities and there will be two positions where there will be zero intensity so there should be two positions where there is zero intensity and there are two positions where there is maximum intensity on the one complete rotation of the Nicole prism and these two maximum intensities they occur when the principal section of Nicole prism is parallel to the vibrations of electric field. So there are only two positions where the vibrations of electric field will be parallel to the Nicole prism in one complete rotation. So one will be 0 degrees and another will be 180 degrees. And again at 360 degree that will be same as that of 0 degrees. So those two positions are the same. So when the angle is 0 degrees between the electric field vibration and the principal section you will get maximum intensity and when the angle is 90 degrees then then the light will not be transmitted. Then again after a rotation of 90 degrees that is at 180 degrees again the principal section will be parallel to the vibrations of electric field. So in that case you will again get maximum intensity and after that a rotation of 90 degrees further that is at 270 degrees you will again get zero intensity. So this is the complete rotation in one complete rotation of the Nicole prism. So after that you get 360 degrees that is same as that of zero degrees. So these two positions are the same. So at 0 degrees and 180 degrees you get maximum intensity and at 90 degrees and 270 degrees you get zero intensity. So this happens only when the incident light is plain polarized light. So maximum intensity occurs when electric field vibrations they are parallel to the principal section and zero intensity occurs when electric field vibrations are perpendicular to the 
principal section so if this thing happens on the rotation of nicole prism then the incident light is plane polarized light so without any doubt if these things happen on the rotation of the nicole prism then the incident light is plane polarized light now we are going to see how do we detect circularly polarized light so when circularly polarized light is made to fall on nicole prism and nicole prism is rotated gradually and we observe the transmitted light so what happens in that case so it is seen that when circularly polarized light falls on the nicole prism the intensity of the transmitted beam it will remain the same on a complete rotation of the nicole prism so intensity will not change on the rotation of the nicole prism when circularly polarized light is made to fall on the prism so when circularly polarized light is examined through nicole prism the intensity of the transmitted beam is not altered as the nicole is rotated as you rotate the nicole prism the intensity of the transmitted beam is not altered it remains the same this behavior is similar to that of unpolarized light so when circularly polarized light falls on nicole prism the intensity of the transmitted light is not altered as you rotate the nicole prism and when you make unpolarized light to fall on the nicole prism instead of circularly polarized light if you make unpolarized light to fall on the nicole prism the same thing will happen in that case also the intensity of the transmitted light will not be altered as you rotate the nicole prism so for circularly polarized light also intensity of transmitted beam is not altered and for the case of unpolarized light also the intensity of transmitted beam is not altered on the rotation of nicole prism so how do we distinguish that if the light is circularly polarized light or it is unpolarized light so how do we distinguish them we use quarter wave plate to distinguish between circularly polarized light and unpolarized light we use quarter wave plate so we make the circularly polarized light to fall on a quarter wave plate so this is quarter wave plate lambda by 4 plate so when circularly polarized light falls on a quarter wave plate now what is circularly polarized light circularly polarized light is made up from the two orthogonal components which have same magnitude but have a phase difference of pi by 2 so the two components in the circularly polarized light have a phase difference of pi by 2 and we have seen that the quarter wave plate introduces a phase difference of pi by 2 between the two orthogonal components the quarter wave plate it introduces a phase difference of pi by 2 between the two orthogonal components now the orthogonal components of circularly polarized light already have a phase difference of pi by 2 and when circularly polarized light is made to pass through the quarter wave plate then the phase difference of the transmitted light will be pi by 2 which was the earlier phase difference plus pi by 2 which was which is the phase difference introduced by the quarter wave plate so pi by 2 was the phase difference which was already present in the circularly polarized light and the another pi by 2 phase difference is introduced by the quarter wave plate so resultant phase difference between the two orthogonal components will be pi by 2 plus pi by 2 so that will be equal to pi so when circularly polarized light is made to fall on a quarter wave plate the transmitted light will have pi phase difference between the two orthogonal components and if pi is the phase difference between the two orthogonal components then the light is linearly polarized light so as we have already done if the phase difference is 0 pi 2 pi 3 pi that light is the plane polarized light which means that when circularly polarized light falls on a quarter wave plate it is converted into it is transformed into linearly polarized light so the light which will emerge out of the quarter wave plate will now be linearly polarized light and this light is made to fall on nicole prism now so this will be the same case that we did over here when plane polarized light is made to fall on nicole prism over here we have converted this circularly polarized light into the plane polarized light now this will be made to pass through nicole prism and nicole prism will be rotated so in the in this case if the light is circularly polarized light the nicole prism will show two maximum intensities and it will show two zero intensities so nicole prism it will show two positions where we will where we will have maximum intensity of the transmitted light and there will be two positions where we will have zero intensity of the transmitted light <clears throat> so this is how we distinguish 
between a circularly polarized light and unpolarized light because if you make unpolarized light to fall on the quarter wave plate if you make unpolarized light to fall on the quarter wave plate the quarter wave plate will have no effect on the unpolarized light so the light which will come out of the quarter wave plate will be the unpolarized light again so when circularly polarized light to distinguish between circularly polarized light and unpolarized light we use a quarter wave plate the quarter wave plate converts the circularly polarized light into plane polarized light whereas the unpolarized light is not at all affected after passing through the quarter wave plate so it will be again the unpolarized light and if it is unpolarized light on passing through the nicole prism it will not show any change in the intensity on rotation as we have already seen the intensity of the transmitted beam is not altered as the nicole is rotated and this is similar to that of unpolarized light so if the intensity of the light if the intensity of the light becomes maximum two times and and zero two times then the light is circularly polarized light and if the intensity is not altered on the rotation of nicole prism then the light is unpolarized light so this is how we differentiate between the unpolarized and the circularly polarized light so dis to distinguish between the two allow the light to fall normally on the quarter wave plate so we make them to fall on quarter wave plate and then examine through nicole prism so then we examine it through nicole prism if the intensity varies between maximum and zero if the intensity becomes maximum and then becomes zero then it is circularly polarized light because circularly polarized light has been converted into plane polarized light if it is circularly polarized light then the transmitted beam it will have its intensity varying between maximum and zero and if it is unpolarized light then there will be no change in the intensity of the transmitted light so when circularly polarized light falls on quarter wave plate the outgoing line light is plane polarized light so the outgoing light is plane polarized light when circularly polarized light is made to fall on quarter wave plate now unpolarized light after falling on quarter wave plate unpolarized light after falling on quarter wave plate remains unpolarized so it remains unpolarized and hence no change in intensity is observed when passed through nicole prism so when unpolarized light is examined through nicole prism and nicole prism is rotated so there is no change in the intensity no change in intensity is observed in the case of unpolarized light so what do we conclude if the beam after passing through quarter wave plate if the beam after passing through quarter wave plate is extinguished twice it extinguishes twice means the intensity becomes zero twice in each rotation of nicole prism then it is circularly polarized light so if a beam after passing through quarter wave plate is extinguished twice in each rotation of nicole prism then it is the circularly polarized light otherwise it is the unpolarized light now the last one is the elliptically polarized light how do we detect if the light is elliptically polarized light so let's fall well, let's make the elliptically polarized light to fall on the nicole prism now this is the principal section of nicole prism now elliptically polarized light we already know we have seen that the electric field it becomes minimum in one direction then it becomes it changes and becomes maximum in another direction then again it rotates and becomes minimum in another direction and again it becomes maximum and so on so this is the elliptically polarized light and in the case of elliptically polarized light also the in the case of elliptically polarized also the phase difference between the two orthogonal components is equal to pi by 2 so when a beam of elliptically polarized light is examined through a nicole prism so we make the elliptically polarized light to fall on nicole prism and we rotate the nicole prism so we will see that intensity varies in magnitude but is never zero so the intensity will become minimum then it will become maximum then again it will become minimum and so on so intensity varies intensity of the transmitted light varies between maximum and minimum but it will never be zero but this same behavior this same behavior is shown by a mixture of unpolarized and plane polarized light so if you have a mixture of unpolarized and plane polarized light in that case also you observe the same thing 
that is the intensity of the transmitted light in that case also varies between maximum and minimum so how do we differentiate between if it is elliptically polarized light or it is a mixture of unpolarized and plane polarized light now elliptically polarized light consists of two rectilinear vibrations there are two orthogonal components perpendicular to each other one is along the major and minor axis of the ellipse so one is along the major axis and another will be along the minor axis of the ellipse now when the principal section of nicole when the principal section of this principal section of nicole is parallel to the vibration along the major axis when this principal section is parallel to the major axis then the transmitted light then the transmitted light will have maximum intensity and when it is parallel to the vibration along minor axis that is when the principal section is along the minor axis then you get minimum intensity of the transmitted light so therefore when you have nicole prism and you make elliptically polarized light to fall on it the transmitted light it will the intensity of the transmitted light will vary between maximum and minimum when you rotate the nicole prism now this same behavior is shown by a mixture of unpolarized and plane polarized light so how do we distinguish if it is elliptically polarized light or it is a mixture of unpolarized and plane polarized light so in this case first thing that we do is in this case also we will use quarter wave plate so first thing is that we have to do is we allow the light to pass through the rotating nicole so if you have elliptically polarized light and you have unpolarized a mixture of unpolarized and plane polarized light so firstly what do we do is we allow the light to pass through the rotating nicole we make the light to pass through the rotating nicole and adjust its position for maximum intensity we rotate the nicole and we adjust we fix this nicole in a position when the intensity of the transmitted beam is maximum so we make the light to fall on nicole and we rotate the nicole prism and we fix the position of the nicole at an angle when we have maximum intensity then after adjusting it to maximum intensity we allow the light under examination to pass through the quarter wave plate so let's say if you have fixed the nicole prism for maximum intensity for maximum intensity we have fixed the position of nicole then we introduce a quarter wave plate between the light and the nicole so we introduce quarter wave plate between these two so in this case if it is elliptically polarized light so elliptically polarized light has the phase difference between the two components is pi by 2 so when this elliptically polarized light passes through quarter wave plate the quarter wave plate introduces a phase difference of pi by 2 extra quarter wave plate introduces a phase difference of pi by 2 and there is already a phase difference of pi by 2 so the total phase difference will be pi by 2 plus pi by 2 so the light which emerges out of the quarter wave plate will be plane polarized light again so if circularly polarized light passes through quarter wave plate it is plane polarized light and if elliptically polarized light passes through quarter wave plate it is also the plane polarized light so elliptically polarized light is made to fall on quarter wave plate then you have plane polarized light and this is made to fall on the nicole prism so you will rotate the nicole prism in this case also and you will observe the transmitted light from here so on the rotation of nicole prism you have plane polarized light so in this case also what you will get you will get two positions where you will have maximum intensity and two positions where you will have zero intensity so intensity reduces to zero twice in one rotation of nicole but this thing it will not happen if the incoming light is a mixture of unpolarized and plane polarized light because unpolarized light is not affected by the quarter wave plate so it will remain unpolarized light and the this thing intensity reduces to zero twice in one rotation of nicole this will happen only if the light is elliptically polarized light whereas this will not happen in the case when you have unpolarized and plane polarized light so this will not happen if we have a mixture of unpolarized and plane polarized light so this is how we can distinguish between this is how we can detect elliptically polarized light and can distinguish between elliptically polarized light and a mixture of unpolarized and plane polarized light so this is the last lecture of optics and lasers part 1